Oh, Ramesh. 60 minutes right on the dot, sir. Well, you know what they say, Doctor. Procrastination is the thief of time. So I take it the craft has arrived yet? Like clockwork, sir, but we've encountered an anomaly when the spacecraft returned. Now, I've cryogenically frozen the specimen, but uh, further testing has to be done to understand its real consistency. If you'll come up here, sir, let me show you what we're working on. Have you started DNA sequencing yet, Doctor? Yes, sir. No match as of yet. Um, the test is going to take a couple hours, Mr. Biggs. Make sure we have no disturbances, okay? Yes, sir. We need everything. Yes, sir. Mr. Biggs, I have never seen a species be able to turn his emotions on and off like this. On one hand, he has shown signs of pure empathy. And yet on the other, he's demonstrated absolutely no emotions at all, whatsoever. It, it's almost like he's a biological mood ring. Well, then I suggest you keep a close eye on him, Doctor. We need to know as much as we can about this thing.
Happy birthday, Daddy. Laura. That's some pretty good shooting. Whoa! What is going on here? Ugh! Such a dork in the kitchen! Sorry, Daddy. Don't worry about it, sweetie. You're gonna be a wonderful husband to some lucky guy someday. It's not funny. What do you say we start over on the food? Together. How about you cook and I'll wash? Fair enough. Mr. Adams. You're trespassing. Get off of my property. Dad, what are you doing? Jack! Gorgeous place you got here, man. Alan? What the hell are you doing out here? Well, I heard there's a big hee-haw style birthday party going on out here with banjos and hayride and line dances and the whole shebang. My God, is that Laura all grown up? That's what happens when you feed him. You know, your father and I are our friends from way back. As a matter of fact, you used to call me Uncle Al. What do you want, Alan? Well, judging by that tone, you're not going to invite me in for cake and ice cream after all. Maybe we should take a walk, Jack. Take care of this for me, hon. I'm working with our old friend from the unit, Alexander Biggs. You know he's made himself a billionaire with his aerospace industries, right? How does a beer-drinking grunt like Biggs build an aerospace empire in less than 20 years? He's got something in mind for you in the way of a birthday present. Well, that's good for him. But I think I'm going to have to pass. I want to spend my 50th right here with my 25-year-old paint horse and my 19-year-old daughter. Jack. I'd really like to see him. Ever since he lost Sophia in that car accident, him and the kid get really lonely this time of year. It would mean a lot to him if you'd come and just hang out with him for tonight. I'm gonna have to take a rain check out. He told me I would have to beg. <laughs> Please, Mr. <laughs> Adams. <laughs> He'll fire me if you don't come. I swear to God, Jack, don't make me put my knee on the grass. Will you get up? Alan, you're embarrassing yourself. Get up. Get up. You come? Hey, why not? You made me do that. Come here. It'll be fun, believe me. It's nice working for Biggs. Guess a little reunion wouldn't hurt. Get come. the unit back together, right? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> You can ask me and Bryce to use something? Yeah, well, that's a lemonade.
you. Jack Adams. <laughs> Look at you. Been a long time. Yeah, it has. And happy birthday, huh? Thank you. You're looking crazy good at 50, man. What the heck you been doing? What can I say? Clean living. This is my daughter, Laura Lee. Laura. It's a pleasure to meet you. Nice to meet you, Alexandra Bates. She's grown up all beautiful, Jack. This place is insane, Alex. Yeah, it is, huh? Not bad for an ex-soldier, huh? But I will tell you, my friend, there is so much more to life than just all this. Speaking of which, what do you say we fire up the grill, huh? Have us a barbecue? For the host. All right. Here, follow me. Welcome to my home, Jack. It's very impressive, Alex. Yeah. It'll do. Oh, well, just in time. Jack, Laura, my son, Charlie. Hi, nice to meet you, Charlie. Almost certainly is. Ah, Charlie. I apologize. All right. What do you say I show you the rest of the house, huh? Come on. Five oh. Hey, you know the drill. Go ahead, Superman. <sighs> Pretty exhausted. I'm gonna call it a night. No cake? I don't eat cake. Good night. Good night, Charlie. You don't seem too happy that we're here. Yeah, well, nothing makes that kid happy. That's a lovely gesture, my friend. Nothing but the best for the best. Cheers, Alex. As for my present to you, I want to offer you a, a vacation. Yeah. You and Laura, the two of you. It'll be on me, all expenses paid. I'll have Alan make all the travel arrangements. We can meet up in about six or seven days and relax, possibly even talk about your financial future. No. Oh, come on, Jack. Don't be a stick in the mud. Huh? I know where you're at. We did a lot of things when we were soldiers. We did what we were told. That's what we signed up for. We saw a lot of the world, huh? A lot of human nature, too. Might have been good, I'm afraid. What do you think? Beach does sound pretty nice. You have to give me some time to think about it. Here's to thinking about it, Jack. Look, you two, you come visit me anytime you want. Whether I'm here or not, huh? Mi casa, a su casa. Be safe.
What are you thinking about? How I'm gonna tell you that I decided to pass on Alex's job offer. Daddy. Not the vacation, just the job. I gave it a great deal of thought, but I just can't do it. I'm not a company man, Laura. I never have been, and I never will be. I miss Mom. Yeah. Me too, sweetie. You know what to do, Alan. Make it fast and clean. Get down. There's someone in the house. Let's go. Go to the barn, get the bike ready, and I'll meet you there. Okay. Be careful. Where's your inhaler? Oh shit. It's in the house. Breathe, baby. Breathe. Come on, breathe. Come on. Come on, baby.
breathe. Come on, be strong. We've been here before, baby. You can do this. Breathe. Breathe, baby, breathe. Come on. Come on, honey, you can do it. It's okay, baby. I'm here now. I'm gonna be all right. Breathe. I'm here. Everything's going to be all right. It's not your time, baby. That's it. You're gonna go back with Daddy now. Come on, honey. Breathe. Come on. Laura? Jack? What are y'all doing here so late? Heather, no questions. I need a room with a phone. Right now. I'll pay you later. Okay. Fred? Got me dead to rights on that one. Hey, Fred, listen to me. Laura and I were attacked tonight by a group of armed men wearing ski masks. They shut up my fucking house and we barely got out of there alive. Tell me about it, partner. I'm here right now. Neighbors called it in. It said your house sounded like a freaking war zone. And let me tell you something, brother, looking around out here, that's exactly what it looks like. We've already got backup on the way. Look, Jack, I didn't want to say nothing to you at first because I didn't want to worry you none and Laura and all, but uh, uh, we kind of got our timing off tonight a little bit on this, but we've been keeping a pretty close eye on you for about the last week. Uh, you know, running by the house a couple times a day and all that. Yeah? Why is that? Well, about a week ago, got me a call from a fed. Apparently, some of the guys you served with back in the 90s are either coming up missing or they're coming up dead. And he was uh, telling me all about how your life might be in danger. Jack, who could have done this kind of damage in my town? Jack, you there? Nice reunion, Alex, but we're not sure you convinced him. Well, if I know Jack Adams the way I believe I do, Victor, I can assure you it will. Well, I hope so. Because we need to know how Jack's DNA is connected to Subject A, and we need to know soon. Oh. One more thing, Alex. You need to settle down. You're out of control. 
the council is not only aware, but they're getting kind of tired of it, Alex. Alex, we give you a second chance in life. That was because of your father. We didn't have to do that. And in one split second, we could take it all away. Hey, baby. I'm here. Alexander. Sophia. I'm sorry to interrupt. But I've been wanting to congratulate the both of you on your one-year anniversary. Who knew I'd be doing it standing over a military hospital bed? Who are you? How did you get in here? I have friends in high places. My name is Victor Cole. This is my assistant, Vivian. Alex. I used to work with your father way back in the day. Sophia, could you give us a moment, please? Actually, Alex, I think what I am about to share is very, very important. Your wife needs to hear the truth. Alex, what's going on? Your husband has suffered a severe injury to the cervical spine, the C1 and the C2 vertebrae. The surgeon said that there is a good chance that he may never walk again. Alex, I know this seems hopeless, but I think I can help make all this go away. How? She said I could be a quad for Christ's sake. Probably never walked the rest of my life. Wait a minute. Victor Cole. Shit. I remember your name. My father used to talk to me about you when I was a kid. I thought he was delusional in the end. Always talking about ancient aliens and conspiracy bullshit. You know, they institutionalized him before he died. 
ranting this crazy shit to the press about how you were from some faraway universe and you were over 400 years old. Alex, your father was a genius and a real hero in my eyes and the best friend I ever had. We need you to trust us the way that we trusted your father. Alex. Your father saved our lives. He gave us a second chance. Now it's our time to return favor. Yes, Victor, you saved my life. You gave me life. And for that, I will be forever grateful. But I must live my life. I will not let you down. Do you remember a few years after your operation? Alex, we smoked cigars. We walked, we talked. You were so grateful, so full of joy for the betterment of humanity. Do you remember this? Alex, I must admit, one of my favorite human pastimes. Ha. Well, obviously, you've never had sex. <laughs> Actually, Alex, I have. But where we come from, sex is more of a spiritual and mental union rather than just the physical. How do you have babies? Mm-hmm. How do we have babies with the power of the mind, Alex? <laughs> do you feel anything? Of course I do. <clears throat> but that would be difficult to explain to a man who is governed by his penis. <laughs> well, I may be a Neanderthal to you, but I'm smart enough to know that there's a, a lot you can do for humanity. I mean, knowing what you did for me, just think of how many lives you can save on Earth with your technology. Believe me, Alex, I'd love to, but we are, in fact, governed by rules of non-engagement. You see, the Council made an exception on your behalf. We needed a homo sapien that we could trust to be our liaison to do human things that we simply cannot. Technically, the Council does not get involved with any planetary affairs unless what they're doing is affecting the universe as a whole. Kind of what your species did back in July of 1945 when you began testing your first atom bomb. Yeah, my father worked on the Manhattan Project. My mother told me how much it haunted him. I have a baby boy because of you and a second chance on life. And for that, I'm eternally grateful, sir. Shall we walk? I do, Victor. Good. Then if I were you, I'd do some soul searching. Because, as Vivian said, you are expendable.
Okay, so I meet you at the scrapyard at 0800 tomorrow. Yeah. Okay, I'll see you then. So what now? That was your uncle Kevin. He's gonna bring us money, clothes, whatever we need. What did Sheriff Fred say? Well, it's obvious somebody is after us. We don't know who it is yet, so the best thing is to just lay low until we know more. Who'd want to hurt us like this? Hun, it could be anybody. You have to remember, Alex, Alan, myself, guys like us, we made a lot of enemies back in the day. I had access to a lot of top secret intel, black op directives, you name it. Most of it was high level national security stuff. I'm really scared. Yeah, I know you are, honey. Look, don't worry, okay? Everything's gonna be all right. Look, I took up Alex's offer for a job, a vacation. Really? That's what she wanted, right? Mr. Biggs. Jack and his daughter will be here before too long. I want to know everything before they meet. Yes, sir. Jesus, Jack. I'm getting too old for scares like that. Hey, it's good to see you, man. Thanks for coming on such short notice. Oh, of course. Laura. Uncle Kevin! <laughs> oh, look at you. Ah, oh, you keep getting more beautiful. Thank you. And you just keep getting uglier, don't you? It's good to see you haven't changed. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. This is as good as I could do on such short notice. That's great, man. I appreciate it. Look, Jack, this Alex guy, I realize that you two have history, but uh, I had my CIA buddies look into him. The guy's been a ghost for the past 20 years. Apparently, his wife died in this horrific car crash about 20 years ago, and he just 
up and disappears. Then he pops up mysteriously as a multi-billionaire owner of Bigs Aerospace? I don't know. But what I really want to know is, why does he all of a sudden have an interest in you? I mean, no offense, but I mean, why now? You sure this is a guy that you can trust? Ever since Julie lost her battle with cancer, you're the only family that Laura and I have, so basically, you are the only person I trust. Biggs wants us to go on a trip out of the country, the two of us, but honestly, I don't feel comfortable taking Laura along. I want to ask if you can take care of her for a while. Of course, you know Laura's always welcome. I think I should go first and check it out. What? Dad, no. You're not going alone. I'm coming. <sighs> Laura, this is not open for debate. Men just tried to kill us in our own home. This is not a game. It's not open for discussion, I'm afraid. You can't decide that. Mr. Big says he wants us both to go. I'm not letting you go off alone like this. Not now, not ever. Especially after what happened to Mom. I'm not losing you, too. Laura, kiddo, maybe you better listen to your father on this one, OK? Alex. Hi, it's Jack. Yeah. Hey, listen. I've been thinking a lot about your generous job offer. Yeah, I'm sure she'll be a little upset. It's not about the money. It's about my sanity. We'll work out the details. So over there is our, our science building, Jack. Within those four walls, a lot of fascinating research goes on. We've got our media assessment offices. And that, my friend, is my crown jewel, Jack. The aviation department. I must admit, Alex, when you said vacation, I thought you meant spend a few days on your yacht on the ocean. <laughs> well, Jack, there's that too. But I told you my ideas were big, Jack. They're very big. They are big, big. <laughs> what do you say we visit my science building, huh? Yeah. So what do you think, Jack? What do I think? I think it's all as impressive as hell. But, but why are you showing me all this? Jack, I want you to join our team. I want you to pilot our first manned mission. Me, pilot? <laughs> I don't fly, Alex. And, and I don't see anything here that I could. Jack. There's much more to see, my friend. But only if you're truly interested and you are ready. Hmm? Oh, Dr. Rice. Yes. This is my friend, Jack. I thought he'd be interested in our activities here. It's a pleasure, Mr. Adams. We have been expecting you. Would you follow me, please? This is Dr. Ramesh. She's one of my lead research engineers. None of this could be possible without this amazing team of minds we put together. Dr. Ramesh, 
Dr. Ramesh. This is my friend, Jack Adams. <laughs> Mr. Jack Adams, Dr. Ramesh, it's just a pleasure to have you here. Um, we have prepared everything for you, and um, it's, it's just going to be great. We are so excited to have you here in person. Uh, shall, we, shall we proceed? Lead the way, Ramesh. All right. How's it going? just happened <laughs> Indeed, I just love this thing Jack I mean it gets me every single time Jack mm -hmm. Amazing. Watch closely. <laughs> great, thank you. Fair, yeah, great, thank you. So, Jack. I don't know what to say. What do you plan on using this for? Transporting water from the Great Lakes to California in the West? No, no, Jack. Although that is uh, a wonderful thought. I got bigger plans, Jack. Get him a towel, Ramesh, and save the fish. Yes, sir. Transfer was a huge leap for us when we discovered the right combination of elements last year. Last year? What about this year? So tell me, Jack. What do you know about the Red Planet? I mean, actually living there. Well, it's cold. Too cold to live in. Except in the center where it's like our equator. But at night, very cold. A lot of ice. It's not all red like we normally show. It does have a green side to it. Wow, it's pretty darn accurate, my friend. Good for you. Why, are you planning on going to Mars, Alex? <laughs> Hell no. It's too damn close to home.
We've discovered a way to manipulate the gravity of planets and the sun, Jack. Moving their orbits closer to the sun like our orbit. So, living on Mars, the moon, meteors, anywhere for that matter. For human beings, it's possible. Cousin Laura, what are you doing on the computer? Oh, I'm just doing some research. I can help you. I'm really good at doing research on the computer. Adam, Sport, why don't you uh, leave your cousin Laura alone? Hmm? Uncle Kevin, it's okay. I, I really don't mind him asking questions. Speaking of homework, little one, have you finished yours? <laughs> what, this guy? Yeah, I bet that you got your homework done before you even got home, didn't you? Yeah, I did. <laughs> That's my boy. Come here. Get over. <laughs> I'm Kate. Yeah. Do you need any help with dinner? Oh, thanks for all for hanging out. I've, I've got it. Thanks. <sighs> oh, hey, look at that. It might be your dad calling. Jack! Hi, it's me. Hey, buddy, it's good to hear that you're getting a signal with that cell phone I gave you. So tell me, how's it going down there, brother? The research they're doing here is so much more advanced than anyone else. Government or private? Their technological breakthroughs are mind-boggling. <laughs> Look, I know it's crazy, but he showed me some of their discoveries. They've made huge, wonderful steps forward, displacing water from one place to another. Stuff I could never even have dreamed of. Wow. You know, I always assumed Biggs was working on something huge out there. And this sounds like something beyond anything I could have imagined. These things are far beyond my understanding. Yeah. Yeah, mine too. Look, but like any scientific discoveries, they have a dark side. Look, I'm not sure exactly what's going on here. I gotta go. Hey, Jack, uh, I, got, I got Laura right here. Uh, you want to say hi to her? Hi, Dad. Laura, are you okay? Yeah, we're at Uncle Kevin's. Aunt Kate is making dinner right now. Good girl. All right, baby girl, I gotta go. But I love you, okay? Okay, I love you too. Stay safe. Look, kiddo, your dad is the toughest guy that I know. He's gonna be fine. Trust me. He'll be back before you know it. You're right. See that's right here? No, I don't know what that is. I, I, I'm having trouble with that one. They figured out how to handle the forces of gravity through reverse engineering 60 years ago. We just figured out how to master it. It's all free and unlimited energy. So the disclosures were true. Amazing. So this ship can get us into outer space? I've already been there, Jay. <laughs> you? You've already been to Mars? And beyond, Jay. And we can go, you and I, together. Just as soon as you say yes, it could be as early as this afternoon. It's as easy as that. Be honest with me, Alex. Why me, of all people? Jack, a mission to a foreign planet, exploring planting electors. Anti-gravitational devices that'll swing it into a friendly orbit around the sun will take a man of great courage and toughness. Someone I can count on, Jack. I've seen what you're truly capable of out in the field, Jack, with my own eyes. 
It's a lot to take in, Jack. I know. What? Not what you were thinking, aren't you? Who is that? Some kind of prisoner? Jack. That is an extraterrestrial being, Jack. My robonauts came across it from a newly discovered planet, X3, during the last expedition. It's uh, our sister galaxy next door. We were able to tap into a black hole, Jack. We need to revisit that planet with you. It has the same negative type alien DNA that you have inside of you, Jack. What? I know. We're still trying to figure out why. Theory is that, well, he's a version of you from a parallel universe. Perhaps even a star child. My robonauts identified him as a threat. He got too close to the ship, so they instantly froze him, picked him up for analysis. We need to learn everything we can about him. Its species, its culture. That is actually why I need you to come with me, Jack. You're the only Earth connection to it so far. This is unreal, Alex. No, Jack. It is very real. And for you to even to begin to understand the magnitude of the work that we are doing here, you will have to take the next step with me. Jack, there could be multiple versions of each and every one of us out there. Your wife could be there, Jack. The possibilities are endless, my friend. A parallel universe. Dr. Cope. Uh, yes, sir. Continue with your work. Yes, sir, Mr. Vig. Yes, sir. Hun, you mind getting the door for me? Oh, yeah. I, I got it. Oh, thanks, Laura. Um, that's probably Ray. Uh, I asked him to bring some stuff from the office for me. Hey. Hello. Hey, Ray, come on in. Um, oh, let me man. help you with this. Oh. Thank you. The space here. Uh, somewhere in here. Okay. Ray, you're staying for dinner, by the way. Oh, ah. Uh, well, there you go. The boss has spoken. Yes, ma'am. Thank you. Oh, uh, Ray, I don't believe that you've met my niece, uh, Laura Lee. I'm sorry, um. Laura Lee, this is Ray. <clears throat> nice to meet you, Laura. Nice to meet you, too. She's going to be staying with us for the next couple of days. Her dad's out of town on work. Oh, that's nice. That's nice. Uh, Doc, I actually have a few more boxes left in the trunk. You mind if I run out and get it? Please. Thanks. Okay. Thank you. I could help you with that. Oh, well, thank you. Good evening, everyone. We have a breaking news alert. It's been reported by eyewitness sources that Charles Biggs, the son of billionaire and Biggs Aerospace CEO Alexander Biggs, has been accused of sexual misconduct. Several of Turns his accusers up. Up. have come forward as part of the recent Me Too movement. And just in, we have some live updates on this breaking news that Charlie Biggs has lashed out against his accusers and the media with a statement on his Zipper account Laura, stating Laura, the following. Charlie, she's on breaking news. You remember Charlie, right? Biggs' is son. None of your stupid accusations matter. My dad and I are off to space with the aliens. We will own you. Wow, is this for real, Chuck? I mean, we've known that Alexander Biggs' son may have borderline personality disorder, as even mentioned by his father in his defense uh, when he got into trouble, but this is just ridiculous. We have not heard a response back from Alexander Biggs or Biggs Aerospace regarding this disclosure by Charles Biggs. 
However, we will provide you with the most up-to-date information on this breaking news as we receive further developments. Hey, dinner's ready, you guys. I hope you're hungry. Actually, Aunt Kate, I'm sorry, but I'm not feeling too well. I think I should go lay down. Oh, no, honey, I'm sorry. Maybe if you eat something, you'll feel better. I can save you some food for later. I'll just leave it in the fridge for you when you're ready. All right. Thank you. Feeling okay? Yeah, I should be fine. <sighs> Look, it's stressful, I know. I get it. Why don't you just go rest up and uh, we'll be down here if you need us. Yeah. Okay. Get some rest. Thank you. Of course. Inside of that room right there. Open the door! Open this door. I'm so sorry that it had to be this way, Jack. I truly am. Open this goddamn door, Alex, right now. Jack, I need you to think things through. Now, it's gonna start getting uh, a bit chilly in there. You're crazy, man. You're fucking crazy. Until your answer is yes, I'm ready to go, Alex. Don't hold your breath waiting, man. Open the door. You will be going into space with me, Jack. And perhaps even, hell, tomorrow. <laughs> I would bet on it. Oh, and uh, there is no need for you know, an elaborate escape. There is none. And don't you worry about your sweet Lee. You touch my door yeah. and I will kill you. Oh, and you know she's due here any moment. Touch her. You're a dead man. I promise you, I will kill you. I swear to God, I am gonna kill you, Alex. Jack, you've seen our technology. And you know what we're capable of here. We can do this, you and I. Together. Open this door. Laura's gonna be fine, Jack. You're just going to space with me. Alex! Get back here, Alex! 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 It's gonna start getting a bit shaky in there. Jack is being complicated. Yes, I've noticed, sir. I thought he would be. We don't have much time to break. The other's ready. Just in time, sir. Excellent. I'm starting it up.
I suggest we move on to the provoking test. Yeah, let's do it. Let's see if this thing has any violent instincts, huh? huh. Excellent. What is happening? Why are those soldiers armed? Relax, Dr. Rice. But he has not posed any threat to us. It's obvious he's benevolent. Anybody can see that. All creatures must know to defend, Doctor. We need to know the strengths and capabilities of this thing. How he attacks, how he defends, how he thinks. Without that data, we're all potentially compromised. I don't care how peaceful he looks. It's just a test, Dr. Rice. I promise he won't be hurt. Mr. Adams, I just need a few minutes with you. I'd like to explain what we're up to and also be able to check your vitals. May you please take your jacket off and roll up your left sleeve up? Leave us. Give me a deep breath and hold it. Exhale. I just have a few seconds because I just jammed the security cam. Biggs is not who he perceives himself to be. He is abusing Subject A. His intentions are not for the betterment of mankind. It is purely for his own personal benefit. Subject A is going to die if he doesn't stop it. Do you understand what I'm saying? OK. You look and sound pretty good. I'll be back in a little bit to check up on you. Father? Father? Where am I? Is this a dream? No. We are in your consciousness. Why are you calling me father? Who are you? I am your offspring from another world. That's not possible. My name is Meta. And I am your star child, Jack Adams. I come from an ancient planet of highly evolved species. Our predecessors died because of greed and useless war. Our great spiritual leaders and advanced scientists knew what was going to happen. So they created us. 
using the best DNA strands from across the universe. They kept the secret until the Great War was over. Over the last century, we have evolved into a beautiful hybrid species. We are a peaceful species with no negativity in our hearts. We were never meant to be found by an evil man like your Alexander Biggs. Our planet, our sun, is dying. And if it goes, we will also die. This is all. This is incredible. I don't know what to say. Our questers came to your planet a long time ago. Do you remember that, Father? I vaguely remember some childhood dreams, but I never imagined that they were real. Your dreams were a reality. Homo sapiens are one of the few species who can live without sunlight. But my people were highly interested in you. Human, but animalistic. Yet, loving and compassionate. A rare find on your young planet. My son. Yes. Yes, you are my son. What can I do to help you? Help us? And we will help you. Father.
I warned you too many times, Charlie. Just had to be this way. Son? Or no son? Meta, are you okay? Hey, Jack! Jack! You know, I'm running out of time, soldier. I need your answer. And I need it now. Shut the fuck up, Alex. Where's Laura? I want to see my daughter. You know, Jack, today I had to... I had to freeze my baby boy. First my wife, Sophia, and then... My son. You know how that feels, Jack? Oh, that's right. You know what it feels like to lose a wife and a child, eh? Oh, yes. Your wife, June. Why don't you shut up, Alex? Oh. Shame her dying in the hospital of cancer like that. I mean, how could you ever forget something like that, Jack? You see, there was nothing you could do then. Think of the possibilities now, Jack. She could be there. I too long to see my Sophia once again, Jack. You crazy son of a bitch, Alex. Jack. You know, that wasn't very nice. It's kind of rude. Well, this should be quite interesting. Time and no choice, Jack. I'm gonna have to continue the operation well, from up there. All levels must evacuate now. We cannot let that spacecraft go. <laughs> Hey! 
Don't you ever call me an old man. Are you all right? I'm okay. Come on, let's go. Meadow, wake up. Jack, I'm not gonna kill you. What's gonna happen is you and our new alien friend, you're now going to be cryogenically frozen. Hmm? And just until no, we reach our station in outer space. Come on, man. We gotta get out of here now. I need you to wake up and come with me, okay? You okay? We can do it. You and me, Jack. Oh, the possibilities. Are endless. This is Jesse Ronan with a breaking news alert. Reports are in that space pioneer and billionaire Alexander Biggs left Earth and departed for space unexpectedly. What has led to this sudden departure? And why were none of the agencies informed? Has he discovered something we are yet to find out? 
or is he trying to get away from something? There are many questions that need to be asked. Or is this just the end of things as we know it? Today we are lucky to have two whistleblowers. Two whistleblowers who worked so closely with Alexander Biggs. They worked on a top secret space project. One that has the military scratching their heads. One that is about to change life as you and me know it. The questions need to be asked. We are here now with one of Alexander Biggs' top scientists. You were with Biggs at the time of the launch. Can you please shed some light into what is going on? I, I've, I've worked for Alexander Biggs for almost 15 years. I was very proud and excited to be able to work for Biggs Aerospace. But it, it wasn't too long after we acquired the specimen that he exhibited a behavior of ulterior motives that was not for the betterment of mankind. Could you go into a little bit more detail? Well, it, there were other subjects involved and we saw great harm coming to them. Uh, they were being deceived, lied to, and it's not what we signed up for. Well, my son, um, technology fascinated him, science, space. He would always wonder what's out there and and he would always say to me that, Dad, I want to be like you. I, I, want, I, want, I want to be a scientist. And getting this job at Big Zero Space was, was, was a dream job, a dream come true. I, I hadn't spoken to him in a while. It's until he called me and he said, Dad, I, I, I love you. I said, I love you too, son. And um, he had hoped that I'd be proud of him. I know this is hard for you, so take your time. I, I wish I knew, I, I, I wish I, I knew more about what happened and, and, and what was really in his mind. That was, that was one of the things that I, even when he was growing up, I, I could really never really figure out my son. So I wish I knew what he was up to now and where he was. Dr. Rogers and I were on our own when we realized that Dr. Ramesh and Dr. Cope launched off with Biggs. We had one thing on our mind was to be able to stop this, this launch and madness that was taking place. Feds coming in and, and trying to remove us. That there were so many more secrets that Biggs was withholding from us and uh, basically withholding from the world. And we who survived, really feel that it's time for the government to open this up and show full disclosure. This is, this is something that will affect all of us. I'm shocked, shocked. I really miss my dad. I need to find out what really happened. I know he's still alive. There's no need to be afraid, Laura. I'm not here to hurt you. Who... What are you? My name is Vivian. And I'm here to show you the way. Show you the way? Where? There's so much for you to learn about this universe, my child.
This is a Sintamani stone. It has a connection between this world and others, and even the next. It can be used to interact not only with these other worlds, but with the center of the universe itself. Those who possess it control destiny. All of your dreams could come true. Oh my God, they're here. I finally, I knew they were here. I knew they were, they were zigzagging back and forth. I got them on my phone. They, uh, they blew my mind. <laughs> Take me with you. Oh, and all of us that believe it's time for us to go. Let's go. Let's go. They are here. 